coffee once that's done. Uh, you should do that on, on camera. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You should. Okay. Well, problem is strip on camera. You probably get more views. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. The, 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 like, one female viewer. Okay, guys, are we clicking? We're actually streaming. We're actually live, guys. Okay, apparently we're live. What? Uh, thank you, Ron. Oh, there's a lid over there. Could you put Just that on? Take your coffee. Okay. Take your coffee. Quickly, yeah, bring the ro quickly, Chris. That's a that's a lovely um that's a lovely coffee cup. This is my this is my wife's coffee cup. Oh, you know, boys are allowed to have uh, cherry blossom coffee cups too. You don't have to make it into a masculine feminine live, thing. As usual. As usual. <laughs> oh, we're live. We're live. live? Oh, hi. <laughs> We've been live for, uh, for a while. Well, then, welcome back to yeah. uh, Chris and Jordan's TCS TV wouldn't, live show. Wouldn't be the live show without an amateurish intro, so well done. That's what we do. That's our yeah. thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is, as always, one of our favorite parts of the week, and we're going to mix things up a little bit. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've been doing some interviews. We've been doing some product launches for the live show. Um, but uh, first of all, we're testing a new audio setup. We've had a lot of issues with the lapel microphones. Yes. Um, so we're going to try an overhead We've gone back and forth. Yeah, we're actually using um, a Sennheiser MKH-50. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful hypercarbon mic. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, we've also yelled at all the sales staff over there to shut up and be quiet and no laughing. So we'll yep. see if that works. Uh, no we'll also see um, if they can demagnetize all the products so because if the security studio. system goes off, I'm sorry, it might be an, a concern. But uh, I love the sound of this microphone. Yeah. This should be an interesting change of pace. And it is tough. Audio, you know, I know this looks like a professional sound studio. Everybody's but fooled. It, <laughs> but what it really is, is just a corner of a very busy retail store. Oh, so, I was going to take this sweater uh, off. Yeah, take this. We'll take it off. Take yeah. it off. Oh, wow, we got so many more viewers. Wow. wow. No, no, we didn't. No, no we didn't. put that belly away. All right. But uh, what we're going to do today is a little bit different. You know, of course, you watch the YouTube show. We do reviews, camera reviews. I mean, that's what we're best known for. Yeah. yeah, but we've said it from the very beginning on this show. We can't review all the products out there. Yeah. And we like to use the live show as a, as a vector to do mini reviews. Yeah, we've got well, four today. Yeah, we've we've never really done this, but nope. uh, these are cameras that I'll, I looked specifically at what people were requesting that they were curious right. about. That we were just like, you know what? Especially now, you know, post CES, we've had some new camera announcements, uh, and there's still a few from last year, like the RX10 IV that we really want to get to. So right. we were like, you know what? I don't know if we're going to be able to get to these for full reviews. So let's take a look at them today. But the great thing is, uh, because we don't have too much time to go in super detail. You guys let us know what you're interested in. Of course, if there's yeah. any questions you have about the stuff we're talking about, hit it with, hit us with that, and we'll make sure that we answer And that if there's thing. any other product questions that you have about other products that uh, we haven't really looked at, oh, we, we don't will, have time for that. We will yeah. ignorantly try to answer those, uh, you know, and probably give you misinformation. And, Without and a whole lot of testing. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, exactly. No, the nice thing, too, is the stuff that I've brought uh, on the video side, I've shot with. Um, went and right. took them out for a couple, uh, a few days. Uh, in the case of the uh, AX700, RX0, I've played with quite a bit. So. And in my case, case, the two cameras I have, the Canon EOS 77D and the Olympus OMD EM10 uh, Mark III, I have sold one or two. So, you know, that it's, makes me an expert. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, <laughs> all jokes aside, that's partly yeah. why we want to show these cameras, because they're not selling that well. Okay. Well, so maybe, um, maybe you know, this will help. Just get some education out there. Yeah. Let people see what these cameras can yeah, do. Yeah, there's definitely niches for everything. Um, so why don't you start with the EM10 III, because that's by far the most requested the one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, the Olympus, uh, the Olympus EM10 line has always been their entry-level mirrorless camera format. This is now a new update, and I think the first thing that I want to say, you know, really if you look at it from this, uh, from the standpoint of has this really changed that much, it hasn't actually changed that much. Not I'm, the guts. Like, looking no. at the spec sheet and everything, you'd be like, why is this an upgrade? Besides, of course, the addition of 4K video. Yeah, 4K video is going to be surprisingly routine. good quality, actually. You know, on that topic, though, keep in mind, when all the other cameras are start kind of updating to a 20 megapixel sensor, this is still using a 16 megapixel sensor, right. which is not a bad thing, but, I, you know, it's a little bit unfortunate. I feel like any camera now competing with the competition is really ultra important, especially micro four thirds. Right. But as you can see, beautiful camera design. I've always loved the Olympus aesthetic on the cameras. Here, why don't you hold that still for a little yeah. bit and Ron can Oh, Ron's uh, doing Ron it. Ron can yeah. do what Ron yeah. does. You know, look at that. We'll switch over to this camera. And you uh, know what? While we switch over, um, just real quick. Oh, comment. sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, it's not a show, I guess, if I haven't said um like that. Uh, <laughs> Okay. We're on fire as Jordan, usual, people. Jordan, uh, 
it's being asked if you could make a grading tutorial. Uh, yeah, I actually saw that uh, request the other day on Ooh. YouTube as well. So we've done our there intro to working with log. We uh, did, yeah. A while back. But, I mean, yeah, certainly, um, especially now, uh, this is a great segue. The new Final Cut 10.4 came out. And when I finished our last episode, the G1X3, I actually had a lull in my schedule. So I was finally able to update Final Cut. And they've added things like uh, color wheels that are really intuitive, mm. easy to work with. Tint, uh, white ba uh, white balance correction without having to do it manually. What are you um, gonna do about color finale? What's gonna happen? I'll still need it for vectors, but I'm gonna use it a lot less, which is wow. awesome. And the performance is much better when I'm using that than color finale. So yeah, one know. of the reasons we're not doing a uh, tutorial for color grading is the way I color grade is gonna be changing in the next few weeks. And, and I gotta sort all that out. Right I now. teach photography at a technical college at State here in Alberta. So if you want me to do a tutorial on how to grade classes. I could do that <laughs> if you guys want to see that. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Okay. Carry on. Okay, awesome. um, you know, so the aesthetic is beautiful, and I, uh, what I, what I first love about the M10 Mark III when picking up, the dials are beautiful. When you first look at it, they look kind of chunky and oversized, but they fall right into the fingers. They feel great. It's just some of the nicest controls. And really, if I was going to get anything across about the M10 Mark III, it would totally be better control uh, mechanisms. So Olympus has done some interesting stuff. They've notoriously had terrible menu systems. Eh, yeah, Jordan? I mean, that's Just, always been our first beef with them. Whenever oh, someone's man. looking at them, they're like, I'm new to photography. I want an easy-to-use camera. We don't see people generally yeah, jumping on Yeah, and you throw the hundreds and hundreds of menu features at them and stuff. Like, it's ridiculous. And just confusing things like, so how do confusing. I know that the heart is silent mode unless I go flip through the manual? So things stupid. like that. Yeah. So one of the best things they did here is they actually just took out, I mean... I would say almost 100 menu options. Just took, stripped them right out, right? Yeah. Made this camera super simple, a much more uh, easy and intuitive when you're picking it up and using it. Yeah. And I think for anybody getting into the camera, that's going to be a huge benefit. Yeah, let me show you something yeah. here. So uh, this is kind of nice. We're just going to run an HDMI yeah, feed right Jordan's out of this gonna camera. Yeah, Jordan's going to drive here. Um, so... What I really like about this, a lot of the time people would grab one of these Olympus cameras and they'd turn on one of these really cool modes. Olympus have a lot of awesome uh, things, you know, where it'll build a long exposure and you can watch it do that, uh, multiple exposure. Yeah, and they've always had this, but it's something you've it's had a, to dive into, dive into to menus. find. Yeah, this and, is a nice change. And more importantly, I'd find whenever someone would look at something like that, um, it would cancel a whole bunch of your menu options. If you forgot, for example, you did a long exposure shot, mm -hmm. you'd turn on your camera and suddenly you can't do anything with it. All these exactly. options would be locked. So what they've done with this that I find really smart is on the top dial now. Oh, did that go in? You're uh, to break uh, nope, that mini not. HDMI port because um, they're just the worst connector of there all time. Oh man. Okay, so hopefully uh, we can switch over there, yeah, guys. Yeah, we'll switch good? over there. So first thing we're going to go to is the advanced photography uh, mode on the dial itself. Yeah. Uh, this is separate from the art filters, the AP mode here. So yeah, when we swing it over to the AP, now we've got. Hopefully all you're seeing a bunch of <laughs> screens because we can't see the screen. Yeah, it's it's all <laughs> it's gone. Cuts now. off the HDMI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as we cycle through this, all of those really cool Olympus features yep. um, are all there. Really, really quick. Time lapse features. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 live view uh, long exposure is particularly wonderful, where you just watch your your astral photography kind of build up in exposure as you as you watch. Yeah. Um, really smart layout on it. But what I love about it is if you're ever shooting with the camera and you notice, oh, I can't do something at this point, just spin it back to regular PASM sure. modes and it's just a standard photographic camera. Again. Yeah, it doesn't mean you have to go, it means you don't have to go in the menu and turn these things off like you used to. You know, yeah. I, Often you'd, you'd pick up a camera like this, you'd be in the art filter mode and everything would look funky and it takes you a few shots where you realize, oh yeah, I'm in pop art mode or something like that and I have to cut out of it. So exactly. this is a really nice thing. Yeah, the other thing I like too now is you kind of had the option of the their super control panel that they've had for a yep. while now um, or their kind of quick access one. Now I really like they've got a dedicated, dedicated button, button for the super control panel. So I hit this button here. Uh, guys, are we still live yeah, on the we're, camera? We're yeah, now awesome. we're good. Yeah. <laughs> so we can now cycle through the super control panel if we want yeah. to. And then Jump you still hit the OK button in and the middle. you hit the OK, now you you've get got your quick, your quick menu. menu. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what they've really done, which I think was most important, it's not a huge technical advancement. If you take an EM10 II and this guy and shoot the same picture, you'll get the same results out yes. of it. But this is something I would totally recommend. Like, hey, I'm getting started in photography. I want something intuitive. Yep. This is a much easier camera to use now. Um, 
but I still feel my only concern with this guy right now, it is still a premium over an equivalent Panasonic. Of course, yeah. I mean, the Panasonic GX85 basically gives you 4K video. I, I would say a similar sensor and very fast autofocus controls. Autofocusing on the Olympus, it's okay, it's not great. Uh, yeah. One of my weaknesses here, the camera shoots almost nine frames per second, but tracking mode is still gonna be fairly uh, fairly uh, hunting at the end, you know, when you actually confirm yeah. focus. A lot of hunting. And unfortunately, this does also translate into the video mode. So tracking of faces, tracking movement's not great yeah here. it doesn't have the phase detect that we saw yeah, in the just EM contrast 10 i would not call or this a sports M1 camera mark ii <laughs> yeah yeah um is it does struggle a little more the other thing to remember too one of the big reasons i say grab an olympus camera if you're looking at the mid-range is they have had the most effective in body stabilization this is now up to five axes uh it is yeah but this is the same system that we had in the original em1 so it's getting a little long in the tooth right now um, so if you are looking for doing a lot of really long handheld exposures, the Olympus have kind of become famous for like, yep. do a one second exposure handheld. This isn't the camera for that. You're going to no. want to jump up. EM5 II is still a better system and the EM1 Mark II is still their best system. The best out system. There right yes, now. absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're still going to give up things there. Obviously, no weather sealing here. That's something you get when you go up to the 5 series. Yep. And honestly, Olympus cameras are some of the best sealed mirrorless cameras on the market. Uh, if unlike you step some up of to the big players. Year. If yep. you step to that big thing. Yep. My only other complaint that I want to mention yeah, on the EM10. Thank then. you. Yeah, my only other complaint that I want to mention on here. Um, the auto ISO is something I actually use a lot now. Um, as a photographer, a lot of people think that's a basic beginner mode, but no, I actually great. rely on auto ISO in a huge way nowadays because it frees you up ha from having to change something on, on the regular. I yeah. knew it. That'll kick through the mic pretty good. <laughs> but uh, one thing I want to say on the EM10 uh, Mark III, you still can't customize a minimum shutter speed, and that's key. Yeah. If I'm on the street or I'm shooting sports, I want to have that set to 500th of a second minimum and let the ISO keep me at that shutter speed. That's where the magic really happens. Here, it's basically gonna look at your focal length and give you an appropriate uh, shutter speed, but I wanna be able to customize that and I can't do it here, yeah. so. And this is the kind of artificial software-based handicapping that drives me crazy. Sure. I understand if they wanna use a less expensive IS system, you know, lower a sensor than some of their higher end stuff. Things like this though, it's software. Yeah. And this is borrowing the menu from the EM1 too. Just give us all exactly. of those menu options that are available. And you know, so kudos to Olympus for really pushing art filters. I know that's something that we often look with disdain at on a lot of cameras, you know, but they are trying to make it something people actually use as opposed to something buried that you have to kind well, of Well, it discover. makes sense with this type of camera. Sure. You I know, still think they're cheesy looking. On something like the Pan F, I'd be like, come on, this is a $1,500, well, it was a $1,500 yeah. camera before they started discounting it like crazy. But, you but, know, Olympus can do some nice color. But unfortunately here with this camera, if you're in auto mode, it forces you into the eye enhance kind of mode. Right. You're getting pop art color, you're getting enhanced sharpness. A lot of beginners might dig that, but I think a lot of people are gonna find that's a little uh, abrasive. It's, it's a pretty, little garish. It's garish. Yeah. Again, you go into MASP, you're fine. You can do whatever you want. Use the natural tone. We like that, it looks pretty good. I really like theirs, yeah. yeah. Uh, any questions there, Ron? About the EM10 Mark uh, or maybe about this very sexy lens woo, that we have on here now. This is also, just oh. came in the store, the brand new 17 We, we could give Ron a second answer. Yeah, Do you right. have questions, Ron? No, no, we're, we're good. See, oh, that's okay. what I yeah. thought. See, I read Ron's okay. mind because we're telepathically linked. Yeah. 17 Condolences. Mil, I, know, yeah, I know. He thinks up some scary stuff. It's uh, an empty warehouse, really. Terrifying, and it's all about me. Yeah. 17 millimeter, 1.2 lens. Yes. You like the 35 mil focal length because you're weird. Uh, but this is, I'm sure, a beautiful lens. I want to well, test it. And this is a lens I think you're going to see on my GH5 a lot because I do love a 35 for uh, filming our YouTube episodes. And because the manual focus clutch. It has a real manual focus clutch. Out of focus rendition on this is... Actually, let's kick it back over. Check this out. I'm just oh, man, you're going to make, you're gonna make the boys go back to the camera? Right. We're, going, we're going back to can, the camera, can boys. Can you hold it steady instead <laughs> of, like... Making people vomit? A action shot... Just everything looks like a horrible Bruckheimer. There we go. Movement shot. Oh, all right. So I just threw it to look minimum at, focus. Look at that out of focus. And you can see just a gorgeous out of focus. Nice. Look at that. That's this. that's really pretty. And a wonderful manual focus and action on there that. There we go. Hello. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so I am very excited to do a little more testing of this. Wet, fully weather sealed. Uh, it's going to be a great companion if you've got an EM1 too. Well, this is not fully weather sealed at all. You're crazy. No, the, oh, the, the lens. lens. Yes. Yeah. Please yeah. don't get the body wet. No, no, no. Wreck no. It. It'll be destroyed. Yeah. 
<laughs> Little holes on the top for audio. Water gets in there. Yeah. You're out of luck. Uh, cool. What, should we jump over to a video yeah, camera? No, let's get into another camera because we've got uh, yeah. three more to cover here. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so first thing I wanted to talk about was this RX-0. A lot of people are very curious about. Yeah. Um, so this is, a lot of people I think are kind of misrepresenting what this is. They're looking at it as a GoPro replacement. Right, and when we first saw this camera. That was our first inclination. Well, no, I mean, we first saw this camera, obviously it looks like a GoPro, but once you start to figure out, it's got the one inch sensor in there, it's got a, a lens that's not ultra wide, almost fisheye kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This really actually appeals to me as a very uh, good cine cinematographer's GoPro. This is this is a high-end in-car cam. This is an amazing crash cam. This is a small spaces cam. And, and you're getting way better image quality and low-light performance than a GoPro is going to give you. Right. Um, and how I'd really look at this is... That this is your, in the corner, though. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, we're getting a little washed out there. Yeah. Probably because the screen that. is dirty as hell. <laughs> uh, or the viewfinder's probably got fingerprints right. on it. Oh, it, it does. A lot yeah, of fingerprints that's, that's on it. Oh, it is wow. fingerprints, yeah. Yeah, very fingerprinty. Um, so what I find really interesting about this, this okay. is designed as your compact mobile production camera. Um, yes. So this is something, if you want 4K, a lot of people have been saying, it's just a 1080 camera. There's for no 4K. Which is totally true. This is not a camera that I would use, you know, as a standalone A cam sure. on a production. People are like, it's not a very good vlogging camera. It's not built for that at no, all. it's not built for that. Um, where this guy really sings is if you're, shooting a you know doing proper filmmaking you want say a couple of car cams uh there's a movie that just came out proud mary uh this week right. where a lot of car scenes they just litter RX the cars zero. in this they're all kicking out to external recorders so they can uh exactly. switch that out and that's the real benefit here and the other main thing is this is a small camera with picture profiles that will match with the cinema camera this isn't something we've seen before yep. so uh we've got S log um, two is built into it. We got picture profile six, um, picture profile two. If you want to match it with broadcast mm -hmm. cameras, um, and there is really nice mm -hmm. dynamic range is, on this camera. Sure. Uh, is that camera yeah. still on? Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Now, of course, Sony is go. aiming this. Sony's yeah, definitely go. aiming this at right. uh, at users of equipment, uh, oh, well, Sony equipment already. I mean, yeah. anybody using RX10 Mark IVs and things like that are going to appreciate the similar kind of look on this camera. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, anybody can pick this up if they want some with better dynamic range and low light performance than what a GoPro normally gives. Yep. Um, unfortunately, no electronic. Uh, sorry, no no optical stabilization. Yeah. And that was sad because you know Sony was one of the only companies that put optical stabilization in their action cams, and it's kind of funny that. It isn't present here. I mean, that is kind of a, a minus. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I do love is it's a 24 millimeter corrected lens. Yes. Um, you can you can always tell on a TV show when they cut to the GoPro, GoPro. or whatever sure. that even if they correct it, there's so much perspective distortion because yep. the lenses are so wide. This is a really nice focal length on it. Yeah. The other thing that's kind of cool is we have a one inch sensor with a 24 millimeter equivalent lens. Um, so you have to worry about focus with this guy, and there yeah. is no autofocus on this camera. Mm -hmm. If you're shooting stills, it has single point autofocus, but otherwise it doesn't. So I'm gonna kick over so you can see the camera menu here, and I'm gonna show you. Yeah, we need uh, yeah. we need the Arc Zero here on screen. Okay. All right. So hopefully, uh, if you guys can confirm there, we're seeing the menu, yep. uh, all the display, everything like that. Okay. Uh, now. Again, powers down your display on this. This is one frustration with this camera. Yeah. If you do want to rig it out to an external recorder, you have to use that as a viewfinder as well. But now what we've done is we can do their pre-focus mode, which is just mm -hmm. basically hyperfocal. So hitting this button here, you can see we can jump between their near mode, which is a half meter to meter, and their sort of far and their far mode. mode. Yeah. Um, which I really love. It's really cool. Um, when I was just using this for shooting like some family video and stuff like that, set it to the near mode, get it right up there, and you actually get a little bit Soft of subject background. isolation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, I can't see it. Could you guys tell me if I'm in near or far mode? What uh, does it say on the bottom? You, you see my settings. Oh, yeah. oh, let's get out of there. <laughs> okay, so if I push the button, what does it say on the bottom right? Uh, you just still HDMI, HDMI settings. There we go. We're out. Uh, awesome. Near mode. Right near. Cancel Ooh. near mode. Now okay, we were, okay mode. so we're in near mode right now. So you can see, I, there's a little bit of separation between Chris and the books. Let's get right in there. Uh, ISO oh, auto. Hey, you want to bring, um, see, bring up that not, shutter speed? It's not crazy out of focus, <laughs> but uh, it is certainly, it's noticeable that Chris right. is sharper than the background. And I really like that in an action cam. Makes it look more like you're working with a proper camera. I push that button oh, again. Oh, you make, make everybody vomit. Now we're can, into far mode. Can you bring up that shutter speed? So, 
Ron wants a faster shutter yeah, speed? Yeah, just slightly faster shutter speed so everything doesn't look as blown out. Oh, um, I can't see what I'm doing here, guys. <laughs> uh, here, kick back to us. But I'll yes, it does over. have full manual control. I mean, I think people Yeah, get the it's idea. actually a really sweet little menu for this guy. Now, is this guy, would you say, better than a GoPro? or If you're using this as a primary camera like a GoPro, I'm, you do sacrifice the 4K recording. Yep. It's a more hands-on camera. It's not like a GoPro where you point it at something. It's going to be in focus all the time. I mean, here's the thing. Because of a smaller chip. Can you use this as, a, as an everyday family's travel beach action cam you'd have to be okay with the fact that it's only 24 mil wide angle although it is a beautiful 24 mil wide angle yeah. um you you're gonna appreciate better low light performance but that's not really gonna be a factor when you're out at the beach during the day kind of thing yeah. um i really see this as more of a cinematic tool for filmmakers this is your and, secondary and camera yes. yeah this is this is the GoPro for filmmakers, especially we consider the color profiles that match broadcast standards, uh, having the corrected lens and getting the better image quality out of it. No. So no, I think if anybody's looking at this as an action cam, you're looking at a fairly expensive product. The slow mo's a little soft. I mean, you get it 240, is, yeah. but it's a little. The soft. 120 is really beautiful. The 240, I was a little let yeah. down, especially compared to the RX10 IV. Um, that's kind of the drawback, but it really does make me put my money where my mouth is because I've said for the longest time. I will take dynamic range over resolution any day with a video camera. Right. Here we are. We've got a 1080 camera with better dynamic range than a GoPro yeah. when you shoot that S-Log2. And absolutely, this is something I would use a lot. The other great yeah. thing is with a GoPro, they are, even if you shoot ProTune, a little tricky to match to other cameras because sure. they're not quite flat enough where if you're shooting S-Log with this guy, I, can, I yeah. can match it with my GH5 you know, with some practice very quickly and easily. Yeah. And there's already LUTs out there for doing exactly that. So don't really think of this as an action cam. Think of this as a unique B cam for cinematic work. Yeah, and disregard so much of the information out there is by vloggers saying this isn't a great vlog cam. Yes. It was never billed as a vlog cam. It's not designed for no. that. Uh, this is a camera for advanced video production. And in that case, you know, grab a few of these. Grab You've a got a killer B cam Absolutely. option. Absolutely. Uh, should we jump? Uh, any questions on the Arc Zero there, Ron? What do you want to talk about? Let's see. Um, nope, we're... Anything funny or ridiculous that people are saying? I hope so. Um, this is no. an all-time low for interaction. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, the uh, thing is we're doing such a great job. No that's one what it we're is. We're answering everyone's that's questions. What it is. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Okay. So, the people okay. are saying, like, uh, it's kind of niche. and It's kinda, super oh, yeah, niche. Totally. Yeah, yeah. That's so. the thing. We're talking about a lot of niche cameras today because if it's a camera we think is going to be hugely popular and change the industry, we're going to do a we full review We would actually do a full it. review on it, yeah. So the Canon EOS 77D, uh, I want to look at this here today and really... Hold up. One, one last one. Oh. How, how is the RX0 on a still? Uh, stills on it are fine. 20 uh, megapixels, yeah. Similar yeah. to an RX100 series. Just or, at f4 uh, at a 24 millimeter perspective. It's, it's so pretty restrictive, and at this price man. point, I would just grab an RX100, honestly. Sure. Uh, yeah. You know, any one of those cameras in that series. You'll get a lot more functionality. It's tricky to work with this to the way that we work with stills, where we're quickly adjusting right. settings. But the stills will kick the crap out of any GoPro still. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Um, I could for see this. Sure. This will be a deadly little time lapse camera. Mm, Unfortunately, absolutely. no built in intervalometer on it because Sony's pulled off all their app support. Yeah. Um, yeah. But certainly, it's USB in. You can use their other triggers for it. And yeah, it'd be a killer time lapse camera in that for situation. Sure. Whoa, Jeremy. Hey, welcome. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, yeah. Jeremy Adams. Huh? Is it Jeremy Adams? From Virginia? Now, yeah. It's yeah, we love Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah. Hi, Jeremy. You've been on fire on Twitter this week. Yes. Um, if you check out Jeremy Adams on Twitter, you will see us uh, compared to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which was yeah. awesome. Yeah. I particularly like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that Sony Mavica. Uh, yeah. really We're play, looking forward to that. I really want to play with the Mavica. Stop. Hide, the, don't, hide that uh, thunder. Hide it, that thunder. Su super fast. Andrew C. just asked if you could do VR with the RX-0. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, you'd need an array of them, but there it would be go. pretty killer quality. Yeah. Great dynamic range. Um, it would be expensive. And, <laughs> it would uh, be very expensive. Uh, minim minimum ISO and S log. Oh, good question. I go. believe it was 800. Uh, da, 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 look, da, they're all flooding in. Yeah, finally. Quickly, Chris, vamp. Vamp? Oh, what? Vamp. vamp. Well, I've got this camera that I want to talk okay, about. Okay, why don't you talk about that, and I'll come back to the ISO here in a second. Oh, you're going to cut into my review. I believe it was 800. <laughs> 
So, yeah, just a little bit of backstory on the Canon EOS 77D, and, and really from the from the standpoint of being a retail camera salesperson here, uh, as well as a video reviewer, this camera really didn't get a lot of joy in the market. And when we first saw it, although we were intrigued by some of the features, you kind of get a feeling, you know, when these cameras come in, you're like, I don't think this is going to do great on the market. Uh, and it hasn't, right? Ron, how many have you sold? 77D? Yeah. It's been decent. It's it hasn't like, been decent. It's been like, decent. It's been it's decent. It's just, like, if you're comparing it to the T7i, and then it's, uh, I guess, bang for the buck. Right? Yeah, we're so, going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, 1600 ISO. Hey, 1600. Ooh, that's, that's high. Yeah, that's high. But yep. that's, that's old school. That's old school S-Log. Yep. Just stick some uh, ND gel. It's a very flush front. That'll totally work. The first thing we have to preach about the Canon EOS 77D is the name itself, because by calling it a 77D, an EOS 77D, you're automatically putting into the mindset of the purchaser that this is not a rebel camera, that this, this is, is actually tier yeah, yeah tier above. This is like 80D, 70D territory, that kind of thing. But really, in truth, the first thing I want to say is this camera really should be called a, T, a Rebel T7S. Well, and yeah, that's what they did with the uh, 6 Series. Yeah, um, yeah, the T6 I just shifted and the, T6 the naming X. conventions. Yeah. And the reason I say that, first off, first and foremost, this is a Rebel body, but I do want to talk about some of the dis differences. But this is hey, a Rebel it's, it's body. it's local legend Nathan Elson. Hey, Nathan Elson, how you doing? Excellent. Just like the uh, T6S, this has a top LCD screen. I know this is kind of a neat feature, but how many people still use this? Yeah. Not many people are going to miss this. Now the screens in the back are so good. Mm -hmm. You're getting that same Penta mirror system. It's a 0.82 magnification, 95% uh, like, yeah, coverage. You're well. not getting a good large glass prism. That's going to be a big hit here as well. On top of that, when we look at the body, this is a Rebel battery. So battery life is about 600 shots. Right. Not bad compared to mirrorless, but way less than a camera like the ADD. No. Okay. This is a, a Rebel body, straight out. Single card slot, of course, here as well. However, we do have some nice features. They have added an autofocus on button, and that mm -hmm. is customizable. And there are some benefits from the EOS ADD, yeah. namely that awesome sensor and the 45 point cross type AF hybrid autofocus. Well, and that's the big thing. If people are looking at one of these guys right now, I've been always saying SL2, SL2, because you get that dual pixel AF, same image quality as yep. this guy. Um, and yeah, in a pinch, you've got the option of an optical viewfinder. You want to save some battery life or whatever. This is nice though. Um, like honestly, I think the Rebel T7i is the one that's really become redundant because you've yes. got the SL2. The SL2. If you're barely going to use the optical viewfinder, then you can jump up to this where you get the good autofocus. It is a frustratingly small viewfinder on it. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that not enough people are talking about is if you grab an SL2 or you grab one of these guys, you don't have any AF micro adjust. No micro so adjust whatsoever. If you're using a lot of prime lenses or telephotos, things like that, those are the lenses you've got to adjust. Exactly. You're always going to want to use them with the pokey touch screen with the dual pixel AF where that's not an issue. If you're looking through the viewfinder, you could have things completely misaligned all yeah. the time. Now, at least on, on both this camera and the SL2, you have touch screen, you've got 45 point yeah. cross type, you can shoot off the back screen and you don't have to worry about micro adjusting your lenses, but then it begs the question, well, then why not go for an M5 Why not just M6? get a mirrorless camera? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right, with the adapters because that would then give you something that's small and similar battery life. Uh, not weather sealed, of course, on this camera. Another one of my issues, again, the auto ISO, it doesn't give you that customizability yeah. of the minimum shutter speed. So I do like that you're going to get great face detection, good tracking. It tracks better off the back screen than it does through the optical viewfinder. Canon still has not perfected their yeah. intelligent tracking autofocus right. uh, with the uh, phase detect system. But, uh, you know, a nice camera overall, lightweight, definitely. Would you just go up to an ADD? Personally, for me, it would be SL2, ADD, or one of the mirrorless bodies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, let's see if I missed anything else. Uh, yeah, not sensor. Uh, oh, you took not notes? Sealed. Yeah, just in case. I think we've covered everything there. I respect that. Oh, you know, the last thing I want to talk about. Um, Digic 7. One of the things that this does have is an improvement. It is now moving up to the Digic 7 processor, which is different than uh, the ADD, for example. Uh, unfortunately, the Digic 7 processor, although it does give us uh, very good live view capability, enhances the tracking, makes the focus and touchscreen work well, it doesn't change the image quality. So between this and an ADD, even though they've got the same sensor, you're still getting the same image quality. Right. That's not a bad thing. It's an amazing picture taker, but you're not going to get the benefits of that new processing engine. Don't feel like this is giving you a step up as far as image quality goes over the ADD. Right. One other thing too, um, because it's a lighter camera than the ADD, a lot of vloggers are using 
the ADV. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's a heavy, big camera. So if we're getting the same image quality in dual pixel, this might be a great way to go. Mm -hmm. But they pulled the headphone jack off yes, because they did. Canon has nothing but <laughs> malice for I don't, video people. I don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, but yes, if you are looking for a fully featured camera for audio, you have to jump up to the ADD. I would have loved to see this with a headphone jack. I would still personally go for an SL2. I mean, the SL2 basically has the same guts and internal here. Yep. You're getting the same kind of viewfinder. It's a smaller body. And frankly, the Rebel SL2's controls are really sexy. I mean, this is all kind of your plastic dials. It's functional. Um, certainly the layout works, but it's quite cheap feeling, plasticky feeling. The SL2 actually has really prestigious controls and dials. Yeah, I like the feel of it better. It feels, even though it's a less expensive camera, more solid to me than this guy. Yeah. Uh, so but I know this it, has a nicer grip. I know it doesn't sound very positive, and I, I guess the thing is, you know, the, the overall tone, this is a very usable camera. Uh, it does have good, good technology in it. I think it really comes down to what the manufacturers are doing, and this is not just Canon. What the manufacturers seem to be doing nowadays is they're releasing very similar cameras. Yeah. They're slightly changing the name, and they're trying to give the consumer uh, as many options as possible when they're buying, but I think in the end, it really just it confuses just gets confusing. people, yeah. or it's just a method of making a camera that then pushes people up to another An product. One more tier. Oh, you really want that feature? Yeah. Um, this is a fun game for the two of us. Can we rattle off all of the current Canon models using this sensor? Uh, Rebel so, SL2, SL2, T7i, 70, 70, 70, 70, 80D, 80D, Rebel M5, uh, EOS M100, yes, EOS M5, 5, M6, EOS M6, G1X3. Oh yeah. Let us know if we're missing anything. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. That seven cameras all use the same sensor, which is great. I mean, they need to update All within it. a few hundred dollars of each other. It's too many options, I yes, think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Unless you're looking at the G1X3, which is expensive. <laughs> what do we got, Ron? <laughs> um, well, you pretty much answered... Just the, annihilated yeah, everyone's you, questions. You, would, you pretty much wreck shop against everyone's questions. Uh, how different is a 77D from the 70D? How would you sell a uh, 77D over the 80D? Uh, That's a tough... I mean, really, honestly, the only way I would sell a 77D over the 80D is price. Yeah, uh, price and weight. Price That's and it. weight, yeah. I mean, the 80D well, is such a good package overall. Yeah. True. I, I think like having still the cannons. micro adjust, you know, yeah. you get the weather ceiling, you still have the rotating screen, you get the headphone jack. ADD, I think, is still Canon's most well-rounded body. And if no, you're cool with going with an SLR. Just in case anybody was wondering, this is not 4K, obviously, <laughs> never, not going to do that. Uh, and I do feel like, you know, we're still getting a aliasing filters in front of here. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little bit softer in the detail. Good low light performance, though. Yep, great dynamic you know, range. Video, nothing really to, to speak about in an amazing way. No, it's fine. The raw it's processing totally in fine. camera is is very rudimentary as well here. Yeah, yeah I, with the Canons, it's great color in the JPEGs, but I still like to play with those raw files to do yeah. a little more sharpening, play with the contrast a little myself. I find it too crunchy in the JPEGs. Um. Elaborate on the focus system differences between the SL2 and the 77D. Okay, so the SL2 is using Canon's 12-year-old um, 9-point AF system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which we saw back on the 20D, I think, was the first time yeah, we saw that. It's 9 or 11. I think it's 11. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, oh. it's, a, it's, it's old. The 45-point the cross-type autofocusing system, first off, you get cross-type autofocusing sensors across the whole field, all 45 points. Mm -hmm. And the SL2, you're going to get a cross-type autofocusing sensor in the middle. I don't want to get too much into the technicals, but let's see if my hands can, can do the do work, it. okay? I mean, basically, SLR phase detect focusing, it needs detail, it looks for texture, it looks for lines, and it can then see where those lines right. are. So cross-type autofocusing sensors can handle detail, whether it's diagonal, uh, vertical, horizontal, whereas the it other It just needs point, some contrast. It doesn't have to be in a contrast. specific angle. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. With the SL2, the outermost points, you're, you might have situations where it struggles to get focus, depending on how the detail is and how it's aligned. Right. You really have to rely on that center focusing point. Like if it's a horizontal line and you're you have a horizontal using the wrong, type, yeah, it's, it's just not going to detect it, even if you've got lots of contrast yeah. there. The other thing is, having extra points, 45 points, means that you can group autofocusing points into zones, which is excellent when you're trying to track moving subjects, uh, sports, action, wildlife. Whereas, again, with 11 points, you generally get to pick 
like all of them or one of them. You can't get the group. So yeah. immediately this camera is going to be doing a way better job at tracking moving subjects, fast action, while still letting you control where the camera will focus and where it won't. Yeah. For example, it'll track your dog running through a field on the right hand side, but the 77D can still happily ignore branches of trees in, in the left hand side, you know, whereas mm -hmm. the Rebel, it's going to look across the whole screen and it's just going to pick whatever's closest. Which or will often or be the one very specific spot, which exactly. it may not be able to work with. Um, the other, th I had a point. For and you just kept talking. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. But I think I did a pretty good job there, George. I think Jordan. you did a really good yeah. job. Hopefully uh, they answer that question about 45 point cross Oh, there. yes. A lot of people when they're looking at these will always say, well, just use the center point. That's what everyone does. With the sensors getting higher and higher resolution, though, generally, if you focus and recompose on a subject that's closer than, you know, four feet or so, mm -hmm. you're always going to catch, your focus will be off every time because just that tiny shift sure. shifts your focal plane too much. So ideally, you do want to put your focus point on the subject. And, and a very a very common but useful tip that a lot of wildlife and sports journalist photographers will get into is using continuous autofocus and setting your AF for the back button. Because what this lets you do is hold down your thumb on the back button when you want to have continuous autofocus, which is great for movement, and then let go of that when you want to do a locked, basically single point type autofocusing system. It's the best of both worlds. Uh, with the Rebel SL2, because you don't have an AF on button, you got to customize something else. And again, with 11 points, you're not really getting it the benefit. Of it. Yeah. So the 77D does get you into that high-end autofocusing that you would appreciate on a camera like the ADD. Yep. And it does have, as we've mentioned, a brand AF new on button. AF on button on the back, which you can then customize for that very feature. Do you feel that you really need the viewfinder AF with um, how good dual pixel is? And also, it's dual, is the dual pixel better on the 77D than on the SL2 because of the processor? No, no, I would say they have the same uh, dual pixel hybrid autofocus performance. The dual pixel is very smooth. It's beautiful, it's great for video, and it's wonderful for tracking faces. I would say though, it's still a little bit slower. A little bit slower than you might want for fast action and shooting. So no, I would say that the uh, optical viewfinder on the 77D gives you a substantial advantage when you're shooting sports in action. But on the SL2, I would always, I actually would, yeah. always with the uh, hybrid. The only problem is if you're in bright sunlight or sure. if you're using long lenses, this is a horrible way to hold a camera stable. Yeah. You want it up to your eye. Uh, and that's really the trade-off with the two. The so, SL2 for me is almost like a novel mirrorless camera that has this funky old school optical viewfinder on top if you want to use it. Yeah. But I really ended up treating it like a mirrorless camera. If you think you're going to be using the optical viewfinder a fair amount, or again, if you have interest in telephoto photography or something yeah. like that, it might be worth stepping up to the 77. Yes, exactly. Uh, no, Warren, I won't do a Darth Vader voice. Uh, yes, we do went, it. We went. We went through. Shut up. Uh, we went through the... I thought we uh, were over Star Wars season I, for this year. I, I, I did not we like were. the new movie, and I'm saying that on live TV now. Wow. I'm sorry. And the more I think about it, the worse I liked it. it the, the, the script was not well written. And I thought it was going to end three times before it actually ended. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it was just an action fest. I haven't Yikes. seen it. Yeah, it, was, um, it wasn't great. The characters I Mark Hamill. Oh, man. And then, yeah, Warren Boo. Uh, yes, we did do Rogue, the... Rogue One, still the it, best Star Wars movie of all just time. Just super quick for Warren. Uh, Olympus, go. He's uh, just catching up. Just oh. hit him with lightning points. <laughs> On the OMD M uh, yeah. EM-10-3, great uh, handling. Um, excellent viewfinder. Focuses, okay, not great. Still use the old 16 megapixel sensor. You know what my um, recommendation would be? It's got the five axis stabilizer. Well, he could just wait, go back wait an hour when Ron, we publish this. <laughs> Ron <laughs> told me to give him all the features. Better stabilization. Go. 4K all video right. was actually excellent. Uh, everyone agrees with Chris on Star Wars. Warren, there you go. Thank you. Um, okay, yeah, really on, on to the next. Wow, guys, stop with sorry, the Star Wars. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, why uh, did you bring that up? Because it gets <laughs> it's true and it gets tension and Ron mentioned it. Yeah. And you should still do a Darth Vader voice. Which is also the best part of Rogue One when Darth Vader fights at the very end. That was kick ass. That was such a great way to end the movie. I mean, uh, everybody T loved it. T7I versus 77D. Go. My inner child loved it, and then this new movie slapped my inner child. <laughs> <laughs> and said, don't you dare. This is 2018. Yeah. What? Sorry? T T7i versus 77D. Go. So again, the main issue with the T7i versus the 77D is you're back to that standard rebel autofocusing. Otherwise, the body design is identical. Video is basically the same. It is the uh, 19 point on the Yeah, but it's not the 45 point cross type autofocus. And yeah. that's really the kind of benefit of the 77D. Um, other than that, similar battery life, similar construction, similar controls. <laughs> Uh, no AF on button on the back, but the touchscreen works well. Um, yeah, it really is just like the T6i and T6s. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Chris, you're getting a lot of love for geeking out on Star Wars. Um, (laughs) G85 versus EM10 Mark III. Go. Um, The G85 is honestly getting long in the tooth, but the DFD autofocus still probably gives you some of the best quick point-to-point shooting that I've ever seen as far as autofocus goes. Yep. It is 4K. I like the 4K photo modes as well. That's quite handy when you're trying to capture fast action. Um, both cameras aren't sealed. Video quality is pretty similar. I will say, I mean, the JD5 is, is very small, very compact, but the OM10... Uh, OEM 10, ah, oh, geez, I hate their construction. <laughs> EM 10 Mark III is actually a very compact, small body as well. And I, I, okay, Trish, I mean, she watches our stuff. I love yeah. Panasonic cameras, but I always say, and she hates this, but she agrees. Um, they're not they're very not pretty cameras. Yeah. They're not sexy cameras. And this is a sexy camera. And arguably, the GX85 is Panasonic's nicest looking camera. I'd agree. Yeah. This is still uber better. And I love the big <laughs> chunky dials. Not only do they look cool, but they're really easy to manipulate. You have to appreciate that we've got an MASP dial mode here that you can use your thumb with, just like a regular control dial. You don't have to take your whole hand away and, yeah. and do this. I can just use my thumb here, use my thumb on the back dial, front dial. Beautiful. Excellent. Um, yeah. Guys, I I'm, still I still like the color on the Panasonic GD. Uh, I'm not asking any more comparison questions until <laughs> maybe we hit the lightning round. All right. Maybe I'll ask pineapple or no pineapple, but otherwise. Pineapple pen. Uh, oh, there you go. Um, let's see. G85 is sealed. That's a that's yeah, enough for the G85. Kinda, kinda, yep. Yeah, kind of. No, yeah, it kinda. totally is. Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of. It totally is. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Uh, Have we tested it? Uh, uh, G85. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of gaskets. Yeah. Uh, and Panasonic, if Panasonic says something's weather sealed historically, it's been very, very well sealed. I have been impressed by Olympus's weather sealing, though. Yeah, yeah. they're killer as well. Yeah, they really are good. Yeah. Uh, should we jump over to another video camera? Uh, let's do this. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm excited. Oh, man. Barfing. So, okay. wait, Jordan. This looks like a camcorder, oh, but it totally it's 2018. Is. Uh, yeah, I mean, we did three years ago a video. Our camcorder's dead. I said I'd never review another camcorder. <laughs> and you're reviewing a camcorder. Yeah. Uh, the day has come. Um, because basically, for the longest time, the camcorders have been lagging technologically behind the stills sure. cameras. People aren't as interested in them. Oh, uh, are we over on the... Yeah, oh, we are. Oh, yeah, sweet. This camera. You are right. waving it around like a granddad. Right All right. Now. Well, I didn't know it was on. Oh, we're on the camera. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're on the. Ca- oh. well, who's that, who's Guys, that are really old man behind me? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Thirty is the new eighty, Ian. All right, guys. <laughs> so. Yeah. The millennials are like, ugh. Ugh. He probably knows what he man hey, is. Hey. Yeah, and check your frame. Jesus. Huh? It's all Ron, baby. What? <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of Ron. It's all wrong. Yeah, just so you know, that's what Ron looks like. Yeah. Hey, how's it okay, going? guys. So, basically, what we found is the camcorders have always been lagging behind yeah. stills cameras. In terms of features, technologically, it's always been older sensors, things like that. Sony did something really interesting with the AX700 because they basically grabbed the RX104 technology and stuck it in a camcorder. Sure. So we've always had slow autofocus with camcorders, but people have said camcorders have great autofocus because the chips are so small, your depth, you of, field tons of, depth was, of field. Yeah, yeah. So everything looks smooth and natural. Yeah. And with video, again, we don't want quick, jumpy autofocus. Yeah. So what they've done with this, they put all those phase detect points from the RX10 for same focus system in it. Um, so it's great. It's very mm-hmm. fast and very smooth. It gives the option of doing both, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And we still get a nice manual focus ring on this, so we've got that flexibility. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to switch it over oh, and let me know if oh, we get our overlays on here. Actually, we're just going to switch right back to Kay. that camera. All right. Clean, we're, clean we're now? There? Yeah, we're there. Okay, so I'm going to pop it back. Yeah, so we get our overlays. Uh, yes, I can change a tire. Okay, guys. Can Ron change a tire? Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, are we getting our display yeah, overlays? overlays. We've got thumbs up. There you go. Okay, perfect. Um, so you can see we've got our phase detect focus points <laughs> jumping all over the place right now. Uh, how's um, the lens on it? Uh, lens on this guy, it's quite sharp, honestly. Um, but primarily, you're using this as a video. Uh, no, this is a 12 times. 12 times. Yeah. Um, yeah, with a nice servo, so you can see I can do this eerie creep in on Ron right now. Oh, look there at that! Go. Drink it in. Um, and but, I mean, that's one of the main. But reasons. then, if I did change my subject, I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh God, that's Larry over there. 
Oh, man. Oh, you're showing Larry? <laughs> we can see very quick. There. That is Larry with a book, which is something and you do not see And there we see a often. wild Larry in his yeah. natural So very fast, very responsive. Uh, here, let's swing over. Just, There's we got, Emma over hey, there. Hey, look, look that's that. an Emma. Uh, so very fast, responsive autofocus yeah. with this. But also what they've done that I really love um, Again, are we able to see the menus right now, guys? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we can go in and adjust picture profiles with this. So we can match this with the big camera. Again. Same yeah. appeal that I had with yeah. the RX Zero. We have S Log two and three on this okay. guy. Heck yeah. Uh, oh, with gamma. And again, we should assist. mention. I mean, you know, in case you didn't catch it, this is the one inch sensor, twenty megapixels. Same thing you're going to find in the RX Ten Mark IV. Yeah. Um, so we really needed that high end autofocus system. Now, right now, we've got. Gamma Display Assist on. Let me see if I can get rid of that. An here. RX Zero would be a nice companion camera to this particular camera right here, for example. Or you could use this as a sister camera to a dedicated cinema camera, sure. an FS5, FS7, even like an A7S or something like that. If you want that flexibility of the long zoom, unlimited oh. record time. Now we well. should mention, like, why would somebody want this camera design, which is classic camcorder, you know, palm quarter style, yeah. compared to an RX10 Mark IV, which is more of a bridge camera style? Is it going to be things like the rocker dials? Yeah, exactly. You know, for Zoom. It's that servo zoom on the lens. Yeah. Um, I just had someone who was using an RX for professional projects and could not get a smooth zoom with that RX. Right. If you use the rocker, it's way too fast. If you try to spin the dial, and anytime it's you're quite rotating choppy. the front like this, you're undoubtedly torsioning the camera as well, and then it really messes up your uh, your nice steady uh, okay. shot. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. There's lots, lots Good. to say. Um, Oh man, shaky cam footage. I'll start with that. Uh, <laughs> That's me mashing on okay. buttons. The the peaking is on. Yes. No stabilization question mark. Uh, uh, yes, this does have an optical stabilizer. Yeah. Now one big thing. Now we're in S log, guys. Yeah. Uh, so you can see super flat. Um, but one thing that a lot of people are looking for when they're checking these guys out is the image stabilization, which historically is really good on camcorders. Mm -hmm. But remember, we've got a big sensor, which means a big lens. This yes. doesn't have as much room to move around as something like the AX53 from Sony, right. which is their smaller chip uh, 4K camera. So if stability is the most important thing, doing it for action, shooting from vehicles, things like that, that camera's amazing. It's yes. like a gimbal. Uh, where this guy, you do get some stabilization on it, and you can see it's working right now. Not too terribly. Um, yeah, not not much of an issue at all. I wouldn't walk with this camera, things like that. Okay, that's good. Uh, and I would say it's still a league behind what we're seeing on the GH5, the Olympus yes, EM1 definitely. Mark II. It's still not quite there, even though. What is the price dollars. point on this camera, mm -hmm. roughly? There uh, you go. This that's guy, the question. This guy's uh, 22 Canadian, I believe. Yeah. Um, right. So again, in line with an RX10 Mark IV. So really, it comes down to which form factor are you looking right. for. Um, but certainly, you know, having that smooth zoom for doing event work. If you're gonna, you know, use it to like film your kids playing sports or something like that, this has a lot of advantages. I mean, this is this is, albeit an expensive, but basically ultimate if you, family camcorder. If you, if you really got the box. love your kids, <laughs> <laughs> then but for the rest like, of us who kids are like, eh, yeah, you know, you know, know. Wait, they happen. Like, yeah. I guess I'll take care of <laughs> yeah. them. Uh, and then you just get yourself like a GoPro, right? And you say, hey, hey you know, run, around. run around. Strap it to their heads and yeah. let them loose. And then you point to people and say, yeah, that's my kid off in the distance with his wide angle lens. See, isn't he cute? Uh, yeah. Uh, there we are. You've got the classic ability to put on bigger batteries here as well with the camcorder style. Is that right? Yeah. No yeah. record yeah. limit yeah. on it. It people uses the amount. So. Unlimited recording yeah. Yeah. and like all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, which is classic. Mic input, definitely uh, headphone jack. Yep. yep. Uh, now, the other thing, too, is they're using... Sony's um, advanced shoe now, but they've taken away the little notch as we saw in the That's previous great. version. So you can use anybody's accessories now, That's where fantastic. it drove me crazy on the AX100. Or put a cold shoe bar so you can add on extra mics and things like yeah. that. Yeah, brilliant. You couldn't right. do that with the older ones. You had to stick Sony accessories or actually file off the edges of the hot shoe Look on your at other Sony gradually getting rid of their proprietary crap that they used to always have. It only took yeah. them, what, a decade to do that? <laughs> yeah. How are the stills coming off of this? Again, very similar to any of the... Uh, similar yeah. to the RX-0. You're still going to get... the RX-10 Mark IV. You're going to get sharper stills from the RX-10 IV. That is a higher resolution. This is a 15 megapixel huh. sensor that captures 14 megapixels. Interesting. Uh, at one inch? Uh, at one inch, yeah. yeah. One inch. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so decent quality on it, but if stills is a priority, I'd still grab the RX-10 IV mm -hmm. for that. Uh, I think the interface is much better suited to it. You can customize. There's quite a few custom buttons on this. We get a focus magnifier. Look at that, uh, which is quite sharp as well. 
But uh, yeah, RX-10, I still think makes more sense. But if you're using it, we've had so many people grabbing, especially the RX-10 too, I would say 90% of those went out to people right. as a uh, video camera. Then this is nice. You're not making those compromises compared to the RX-10. Okay, but the RX-10 Mark IV, correct me if I'm wrong, is weather sealed. Yep. As well. Is this weather sealed? This is not weather no, sealed, right? Yep. Yeah, lots of but mic But you get a much better, opening. much better internal mic if you're not going to buy an external mic for okay. it. Okay. That is an advantage, but that's also part of why it's not as well weather sealed. Who do you think is going to buy this camera? This is for the well-heeled person who's, again, shooting like higher-end family video, has some experience with manual right. exposure because it's quick access to all that. But I do think it would be a great little B-cam, uh, mm -hmm. say if I were a wedding shooter or something like that. Right, so uh, wedding, I can, event, I can, that I can kind go of stuff. in with my big chip camcorders. I can get all my cool, dramatic shots, stuff like that. But I can leave this guy in face detect autofocus, you know, rolling at the back or, you know, with a less experienced person opping it and still get good usable footage that'll color match with the big cameras. Let's give a shout out to Rick Cope who uh, adores us and watches our show all the time. I don't think he's complained. ever watched our no, show. No, he may not. Have <laughs> but uh, Rick Copley is a journalist, and uh, he, he's actually a huge fan of the compact camcorder style. I mean, he used to rock the giant, very, you know, the big, very cams and the DX cams, giant battery shoulder mounted, but really he's actually rocking these and he loves it because it really is that kind of documentary style. No one pays attention. Yeah. And it used to be like people would think amateur journalist or whatever, but they're all using DSLRs, mirrorless, exactly. things like that. You pull this thing out, everybody assumes, oh man, that is a tourist dad right yeah. there. That's Which the Rick person. Rick can totally pull that off. Yeah. Now who's still using these kind of cameras. So, so it actually winds up being sure. more discreet <laughs> than someone walking around with a stills camera now, in some cases. tell me this camera for that money has built-in ND filters. Uh, it does. Hey. It's got two, four, and six stop ND filters Perfect. built in as well, uh, which is a great thing if you're shooting right. in a lot of bright sunlight. I know Another advantage for that in Alberta, show. skiers, snowboarders, people like that, this is awesome because we get great autofocus ND filters built in. It's What's, a complete package. What's uh, the brightest aperture on this? Uh, this guy is a 2.8 to at the long end. It's an F4.5, I believe. Uh, yeah, 2.8 yeah. Uh, uh, to 4. Get, yeah, two get on four. Larry again yeah. if you're going to zoom Oh, let's get on Larry. Yeah. <laughs> And you can see that oh, snappy wow. focus. Oh, There's, it's one word, and yeah. it's majestic. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Drink them in, people. Wow. Just in like a, log. Just like yeah. a silverback gorilla <laughs> in the mist. <laughs> and just enjoying a, a quiet day in the mountains. Uh, yeah, fully articulating screen is nice, too, uh, which we don't get on the other camcorders. If I use that, I can see, look, it's Nathan Elson right there. Oh, there he is. Hey, you want to color match that camera, or what? <laughs> <laughs> is that in slog? Oh, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It Alrighty, is, it is in the. Any other questions about that camera? Any other camcorder questions? Yeah, I'm not going to get to answer these for another five years yeah. from now. So. Hey, you never know. These yeah. these are working out. People are remaining a little bit consistent. Um, let's see. You could probably cut away from the camcorder yeah, now. Yeah, you could cut away from <laughs> yeah. the camcorder. Oh, good. Good, <laughs> good work, guys. Um, <laughs> Jordan's holding it all day. <laughs> no, we're good. Um, Cool, cool, cool. Mm. So why don't we take this opportunity then to just talk a little bit, and if, again, more questions, please hit uh, us with Jer it. Jeremy's asking a really important oh. question. Uh, is it good for using as a security camera when people break in and steal high-end cameras like Leica's and Hasselblad's? <laughs> That's an excellent question. Uh, Zing. Yeah, you can uh, run this off AC mains, uh, you know, do some uh, no long record, record times. Limit, yeah. yeah, HDMI it out to your system and some uh, quality 4K footage. 4K yeah. footage, decent low light performance in order to identify the assailants. Yes, but Jeremy, it, it would be ideal for that, <laughs> albeit somewhat expensive to station as, as multiple security cameras, but, you know, less expensive than, say, a Safari Leica edition, which mm -hmm. we got back, by the way. Yeah, I mean, that's the uh, takeaway. You don't need security footage as long as yeah. you've got a bunch of people on social media uh, willing to help you we out. We did a great hey, job. Yeah, ha how's, how's the low light quality on the 700? Uh, it's quite good, actually. Is it going to be better than the RX-10 Mark IV? What is the actual no, difference no, video quality-wise? Actually, let's compare it against another video camera oh. just briefly. How about the XF400 from Canon? I haven't had a chance to test the XF4. Well, uh, we've boo had some on go you, through. Jordan. I know. Boo you know, on you. Uh, look, I pulled out a camcorder. <laughs> You're this asking me to step. review multiple this camcorders? This is a big step for him. This is a big step for him. You, okay, you guys choose. Am I looking at the EVA one or the XF4? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which one's, which one's more important to you? Yes. Uh, so we're going to do a little more testing. But again, if people like these mini reviews, then maybe sure. I'll bring out an XF405 and we'll do some testing Absolutely. with that guy. Uh, it is an interesting camera for sure. 
Um, let's see. I'm close to buying a new camera and can't uh, can't get a hold of a Canon 70D for or can get a hold of a S- Canon 70D, 70D for 600 bucks. Are they still viable for video? Sure. Oh, for video? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're good All cameras. Right. Honestly, mean, the 1080 hasn't changed that much, even no. with the new sensor. Um, no. Um, the only thing, if you do step up to an 80D, you're gonna get that uh, headphone line, which is yeah. really nice. But honestly. You know, for six hundred dollars, I think that's totally usable for vlogging yeah. and things like that. For video, not a, a video difference. camera. Yep. Stills wise, I still do think the ADD huge. sensor is, uh, yeah, a, a, a definite improvement, even mm-hmm. over the 20D's intermediate sensor, which was uh, supposed yep. to be new and fresh. But yeah, no, it's a big benefit. It makes a ADD. huge difference: dynamic range, low light performance, yep. all that. Even though it's not a megapixel bump. A uh, standard battery that comes with it is it? How long does it last? You'll get about two hours like, on that yeah, okay. uh, 4K shooting, yep. uh, solid. And yeah, it's easy to find V100 batteries right, just if SD you want card. a big one. Yep. Yeah, just straight to SD card, yep. XAVCS footage. Yep. Uh, pretty universal at this point. Nothing proprietary about this camera, That's which excellent. is awesome. That is a good move. Yeah, yeah. except the batteries we just talked <laughs> about. And we should say, you know, on the show, of course, CES just happened. So, you know, new products we're going to look at. And um, we don't have a lot of cameras to review as far as stills go. But it's going to be a barrage of video cameras. It's going to be a barrage of video because, of course, you know, we just talked about on the last live show here a few days ago, the GH5S. Which um, we are in the process of yep, testing right now. We're in the process of testing. So um, expect some wooden nickels. We That's coming back. Really cool. And we, we haven't done that so long. We love doing those. So check that out this Monday. We're hopefully going to be shooting our latest wooden nickels episode uh, with the gh5s and doing a review on that camera yeah. but uh yeah very excited so expect that for the next short term but of course there'll be a lot of exciting cameras coming out this spring yeah. and we, we finally got our production g9 as well yes. uh we were hoping we're review for that too final firmware for the pre-production model which uh didn't happen and yeah. uh now it's hit the shelves so we're like why are we so well. much panasonic right now it's because that's they're making new cameras right yep, they're putting stuff out making new cameras and all right 10 is coming out too Okay, so uh, you know what? We got a couple of minutes left. How how are we doing? Like, what? Four minutes? Um, lightning round. Sure. sure. Let's do All lightning. Right. Lightning round. Uh, lightning round. G nine versus EM one Mark two. G nine. G9. Uh, uh, the only thing I will say, if you're doing a ton of continuous autofocus tracking, G9 still suffers from that thing where you're shooting and the DFD is working, so it seems a step ahead of what your viewfinder is doing. Right. So your burst sequence looks like it's all out of focus you just when you're shooting it. it, and then you get yeah. back in software and it's perfect. Where the EM1 too, you have a better idea of what you're actually capturing. I would also say I prefer 6K photo mode uh, for actually capturing action in sports as opposed to uh, what the Olympus does with its, its multi-shot mode. With the mode. pre-burst where it's, it's static. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the G9 I believe now can actually do 6K photo mode raw, which uh, is something wasn't able to full do resolution yeah, raw. full yeah. resolution raw, which megapixels. is something wasn't able to do before. So that is awesome. That really changes the game. There we go. G9 Kay. review coming. Uh, and the M1 Mark, uh, Mark II still has so many menus. Hey, Crazy. Did yeah. I just Too say lightning stuff. round? I just said lightning round. Okay. Uh, Thunder round. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan, Panasonic G9 or AX700. Uh, oh, oh, for, me, for video? Yeah. I would go G9 because uh, I like to juggle my lens. I want to use that sexy little 17mm f1.2 lens. Um, but the G9 is not a stellar video cam. Uh, G9 is okay. still... okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not its main... That's not its raison d'etre. Uh, uh, I would go G9 hands down. Can you disregard do, him. Can you do a review of DJI gimbals? Uh, the new ones are really interesting looking. We may very well do a handheld gimbal shootout in the near future. We have a lot of new gimbals to look yeah. at. Yeah. We've uh, got the uh, Shein 2, the new Mozas. Uh, do you, someone tell us how to pronounce that. Do do you have weir, do you have it's weird Jillian. noise when uh, autofocusing in the G9 EVF? Okay, no noise when uh, autofocusing in the EVF. So yeah. just in the microphones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, always. No, maybe not. I don't know. Like maybe it's Why actually you see it in, in the, the EVF. E- yeah. Like grain, I guess. I oh, noise. noise. Yeah, noise. it's always going to gain up uh, right. when it's in low light situations. Um, so, yeah, just remember your camera, yeah. if it's recycling at 120 frames per second, it's going to try and hit at least 120th sure. of a second, which means cranking the ISO. Cranking the ISO up. But yeah. again, we're going to do a full G9 review. It is coming soon. Okay. Uh, ADD with a 1.4 lens versus a 60 Mark II with a 2.8 lens. Uh, ADD with <laughs> yeah. a one four because yeah. it's a one stop difference in sensor size. Okay, Absolutely. cool. And at base ISO, you're getting way more dynamic range, which is uh, insane. D seven fifty versus A seven Mark two. Versus A seven Mark two. Yeah. I'd go D750. I'm still not yeah. crazy about that older AF system in the uh, A7. But the A7 is going to come out soon, and then that's going to be a closer come comparison. Come on, lightning round. Uh, D750 versus 60 Mark II, I'd go D750. Uh, any predictions when we'll see a 90D? 
Uh, I would guess whenever so next fall. Hopefully tomorrow. When, whenever. Uh, any <laughs> any info in, in, info 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 on a Fuji uh, X dash H one. Uh, there's a whole ton of rumors on Fuji rumors right yeah. now. Uh, yeah, it seems funny because that X-T2 is such a solid flagship. But if the rumors of sensor stabilization are on point, then that's going to be huge because yeah. that's the one area Fuji's lacking. But we do list. we do truly know as much as you do on yeah. that camera. Yeah. Mace, um, estimated cost of an upcoming A7 Mark III. I'm going to spitball 25 Canadian. There yeah. you go. Oh, you're uh, no, no, of course I would. Yes, that is Gary Al, uh, behind the camera. Uh, that was Mr. Strangeman. Um, let's see, 90D 4K? Uh, no. No. Canon ever putting 4K um, in a camera? That's really the question. When will the Canon 7 put 4K in the camera? The, the 7D 3, I bet, will be their first 4K crop body. That would be my guess. That'll be it. give them a way to differentiate it from the ADD and below. Right. Uh, Pen F versus XT20. <laughs> XT20, XT20, yeah. Okay. Uh, you mean one of our runner-ups for worst camera versus one of our runner-ups for best camera last year? Uh, I still think Pen F's one of the sexiest cameras I've ever used. Yes. Uh, Vien, uh, you did we miss the RX the Zero talk. The raw goes around. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Ron, you're supposed to be striking uh, like lightning. You, you guys are rambling on. Any rumors about the RX Zero Mark II? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, you think we're getting an LX100 success? I, I sure hope one. so, yes. I hope yeah. that's the next. In a time when Panny's releasing a lot of cameras, that's the one I really want to see. Yeah, Panny's on fire right now. Um, and uh, Panasonic's really showing what Micro Four Thirds can do. It's mitigating a lot of the issues. Totally. So, yeah, this GH5S was quite impressive. And how much time do we got? I think we're done. Yeah, uh, you we're, we're done. done. But there's that was no more fun. questions, yeah? All right. Okay. Um, well, thanks, we guys. We will see you guys in another couple weeks. We'll be back for reviews. the live show. Absolutely. Actually, this went over quite well. So Good. Yeah. Excellent. Let's, awesome. Let's uh, everybody in the comments, let us know what you thought of the shotgun once this is shut yeah. down. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we might wind up going this way. It was pretty quiet really well. over there. Uh, also, if you did like this kind of mini review camera kind of thing, four is about right, I yep. think, for products. Yep. So if there's any cameras that you want to see us talk about in the, in the next uh, episodes, let us know. We might even drop on songs into it. But we'll I mean, see you guys soon. That's why we did these four. You guys yep. said it. This is what you wanted. This is what you got. Yep. Okay. Thanks right. so much, Thanks guys. We'll see you again soon. See you soon. See you and thanks to our amazing crew for yes. killing it. And our old man, Ian. Yep. Yay. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Ian. Happy